Okay, so if you follow your lab sheets, uh, the very first thing we're gonna have to do is verify the doctor's orders, and then we're gonna go ahead and gather our equipment. So for being a puncture, you're gonna get a vacutainer needle when an instructor is ready to give it to you. You're going to grab a vacutainer holder, and we're going to get two vacutainer tubes of blood. You're gonna need an alcohol wipe to clean the site, and gauze. The only thing that's missing from this is tape, and we're not gonna put tape on the mannequin arms. So after that, you want to introduce yourself. Once you introduce yourself, you're gonna get two patient identifiers, which is your full, their full name and date of birth. And then you're going to explain your procedure, answer any questions, and obtain consent. After that, you're gonna ask them if they have any allergies, and then you're going to wash your hands and don BSI. Your BSI is gonna include a face shield. I'm just gonna put on some goggles and gloves. So after you provide patient privacy, or excuse me, after you um, wash your hands and don your BSI, you're going to provide your patient privacy and ensure that they're comfortable. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and inspect an arm for a good vein, which means that there's no lesions, bruising, edema, or swelling, or anything of that nature that would prevent you from being able to see the vein. Uh, once we do that, we're going to verbalize that we would place an absorber pad underneath our patient. As you can see, it's already there. Once we do that, we're going to apply our tourniquet two to four inches above the site. And we're going to instruct our patient to make a fist. So make a fist for me, and now we're going to go ahead and palpate for our vein, ensuring that it's not rigid, cord-like, or rolling, and it should actually rebound when you um, push on it and let go. Once you locate your vein, you're going to go ahead and release your tourniquet. And this is where we're going to assemble our needle and vacutainer holder. You're going to pick your needle up in your non-dominant hand with the pink safety cap on the top, and you're going to squeeze the pink and the black. We're going to go ahead and twist the clear to break the tape, and then we're going to take our cap off. You're going to throw that clear plastic away. You're going to grab your vac retainer holder, and we're going to go wrist to wrist. Then you're going to spin everything around to where the gray needle goes into the small hole. If you're right-handed, you're going to twist this away from you, and if you're left-handed, you're going to twist it towards you. Once you have that assembled, you're going to set this down, and you're going to reapply your tourniquet. And right now, I know it doesn't say in your lab sheet, but you always want to tell them to make a fist. You're going to find your vein one more time, and you're going to clean the site. You're going to start in the middle. You're going to work your way out approximately two inches, never crossing over to seam area twice. And we're going to allow that to dry and monitor the site to ensure that we don't touch it again. Now you're going to pick up your vacutainer holder with your dominant hand with the pink safety cap on the bottom this time, and you're going to take your non-dominant hand and pull your pink safety cap back. Once these fingers are in position, they do not move, and we're going to pull, not twist, but pull your black cap off. We're going to go from this position to here so we can ensure that the bevel is facing us, so when we come down, the bevel is facing up, and you're going to take your non-dominant hand, using your thumb, pulling the skin taut about three or four inches below the site, and we're going to come in at a 15 to 30 degree angle, and you're going to go in bevel plus a little bit. Once you have your needle in place, you want to stabilize your hand on your patient's arm so it's not floating in the air. And you're going to pick up your vacutainer tube, and you're going to drop it in, and we're going to puncture the tube like we're giving a shot. Your instructor is then going to tell you that your tube is full, so you're carefully going to remove the tube from the vacutainer holder without pulling the needle out, and you're going to puncture your second tube. Your instructor then will tell you that this is your last tube and it is flowing freely, and that will, release, that will tell you to, to release the tourniquet. Your instructor is going to then say your tube is full, so you're going to pull your tube out again without pulling the needle out. You're going to grab your gauze, you're going to fold it in fours, and you're going to hold it above the site. And you're going to remove the needle quickly and apply pressure with your gauze and then safety your needle with your thumb. Needle down, sharp, 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 into the sharp container. Now this is where we would verbalize that we would tape our patient, um, tape the gauze to our patient, and we're going to pick up our blood tubes. We're going to inspect to see if they have any additives, and if they have additives, we're just going to gently invert them. After that, we're going to go ahead and label our tubes with our patient's information. We're going to set these down. We would discard any bloody, nasty materials, doff your BSI, perform hand hygiene, and document. Once you document, you're going to go ahead and verbalize that you would take your specimens to the lab. And that is being a function.
All right, again, just like venipuncture, we're gonna start off with our first eight steps. The first thing that you need to do before you do anything with a patient is verify the provider's orders. After that, you're gonna gather your equipment. Your equipment's gonna be a little different today. You're going to get a IV needle when an instructor is ready to give you one. You're going to grab a Tegaderm. This is a clear sticker that goes over the site and you'll see more of what I'm talking about in a minute. You're also going to need an alcohol pad so you can clean the site and you want to go ahead and grab some gauze just in case there's residual blood um, from the IV. So once you gather your equipment, obviously you're going to have your IV tubing and your medication bag. Um, you're going to, same thing, introduce yourself. Once you introduce yourself, you're going to get two patient identifiers back from your patient. You're going to explain your procedure, answer any questions, and obtain consent. Then you're going to ask if they have any allergies, and you're going to wash your hands and don BSI. Again, your BSI is going to be your face shield, and in my case, goggles and gloves. The last of the eight steps is you're going to, again, provide your patient with privacy and ensure that they're comfortable. So then we're going to start with our first check. Our first check is our six medication rights, and we use the acronym Triple D PRT, which stands for Drug, Dose, Documentation, Patient, Route, and Time. So we do our first med check when we locate our medication. So you're going to look down at your station, locate your medication, and you're going to hold it up in the air and you're going to say triple D PRT, and that will be your first check. Once you do your first check, you're going to inspect your outer wrapper to make sure there's not a lot of fluid. A little condensation is okay, and then you're going to go ahead and open your bag. There's a pull tab right here, and you're going to pull this towards your body. The first thing you're going to inspect is you're going to look at the expiration date in the upper right hand corner. This one is an example is March 2020. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to hold it up in the air and give it a little squeeze to ensure there's no leaks and you're going to hold it to the light and inspect for clarity and particles. Once you have that, your instructor is going to tell you that you have a good bag which will prompt you to do your second check. Your second check is again triple DPRT and in this time you want to add to verify your provider's orders one last time. Once your second check is completed, you're going to flip your bag to where there's no writing and you're going to label your bag with pen diver. You're also going to label your bag with your initials, the Corman initials, the date and time. Once your bag is labeled, you're going to hang it up. You're going to grab your IV tubing and you're going to locate where it says tear to open and you're going to open it up. The first thing that we do when we take this out of the wrapper is close the roller clamp. We call this the roller clamp and we use this as a reference as a diving board. So you're going to roll the roller clamp away from the diving board. Once you roll your, close your roller clamp, you're going to isolate your spike from everything else. The reason why we do this is anything under a cap is considered sterile. So when I take this cap off, I can't have the tubing touch it. So you're going to locate your blue pull tab and you're going to pull this down and then set it down. You're going to uncap your spike like you would a needle. Throw that away. And you're carefully and aseptically going to spike your bag. You're just gonna push and twist. Then we do not move our hand from this position until we do the very next step, which is squeeze a drip chamber and fill it one third to one half. This tubing has a line so we can fill it to the line, which is approximately one half. Once you fill your drip chamber, you're going to isolate your cap. This is your clear cap from everything else. You're going to tear your paper and you're going to step away to make sure that you're not tangled. You're going to, going to hold this at your waist and you're going to turn your roller clamp to the on position. What this is going to do is the fluid is going to force all the air out and once it reaches the cap, you turn this off. Once you turn it off, you're going to go ahead and inspect your line for large bubbles, small bubbles or what we call champagne bubbles are okay. And this one doesn't have any bubbles. So we're going to hang this up on the diving board like so. And at this point in time, we're going to go ahead and label our tubing. Once we label our tubing, your instructor is going to say that your medication bag is labeled, your IV tubing is primed and labeled, this medication is ready to be administered, so that will prompt you to do your third check. Your third check is triple DPRT and two patient identifiers. The next thing you're going to do is inspect your arm for a good vein. Again, you're going to verbalize that you would place an absorber pad underneath and apply your tourniquet two to four inches above the site. 
Anytime you put a tourniquet on, you always tell them to make a fist. So please make a fist. You're going to find your vein and you're going to clean your sight. You want to ensure that your vein is again not rigid, cord like, or rolling, that it rebounds when you push on it. You're going to start in the middle, work your way out, never crossing over the same area twice. And we're going to allow that to dry and monitor the site to ensure that we don't touch it. While it's drying, you're going to go ahead and open your needle. And this is how we open the needle. This clear plastic is the only part that you're holding on to, and today we're going to hold it on the side so we can see the flash chamber. So again, we're going to take our cap off, throw that in the trash. We're going to ensure that our bevel is facing up. There is a notch right here that will demonstrate that the bevel is facing up, but you always want to make sure. Again, you want to come three to four inches below the site to where you're sticking. And again, we're going at 15 to 30. And you're going to insert the needle until you observe flashback. Uh, I will let go to show you what flashback looks like if you can see that there's blood coming in there. That tells you to stop advancing the needle into the arm. And once we get flashback, we're going to lower it almost flush to the skin. And we're going to advance it one half to one centimeter, or I just say a little bit. Now we're going to slide the catheter off the needle into the arm. We're going to let go of the catheter and we're going to continue up the arm and we're going to release the tourniquet. Now we're going to come back down the arm and occlude the blood vessel with our middle finger and you're going to stabilize the catheter with your index finger. You're going to pull your needle out and throw it in the sharps. You can grab your cap. You're going to pop your cap off and drop it. Pinch the catheter and insert your tubing into the back of the catheter. Once that's done, you're going to slide this up and you're going to screw the tubing to the catheter. Once that's done, you're going to maintain positive control of the tubing and you're going to reach over here and verbalize turning it on. So the saying goes, screw it on, turn it on, but don't physically turn this on. Now you notice that there's a lot of blood, so I'm going to clean up my blood with my gauze to ensure that my tegaderm is going to stick properly and we're going to take the backing off the tegaderm and we're going to put the tip of this catheter in the center of this window. Once my tegaderm is on, I can go ahead and let go of the tubing and I'm going to take my paper off and tap it down to make sure that it sticks. So this is where you're going to go ahead and secure your IV tubing to the hand and arm. Again, we're not going to use tape, it's just going to be verbalized. So once you tape your patient, you're done touching your patient. So this is where you can discard all your materials, doff your BSI, perform hand hygiene, and we're going to reassess after 15 minutes for infiltration and phlebitis. And then the lastly, we're going to document. Okay, so now the doctor has ordered uh, the discontinuation of your IV. So again, we're going to verify our doctor's orders and we're going to gather equipment. For the purpose of this lab, all you need is two gauze. This is all you need, and normally we would need tape or coban. Again, you're going to introduce yourself. You're going to verify your patient with two patient identifiers, explain your procedure, answer any questions, obtain consent, ask your patient if they have allergies, wash your hands. As you can see, I've already donned my BSI, and patient privacy and comfort. Now the first thing that you do before you touch your patient is you're going to grab a hold of the roller clamp and you'd verbalize that you would turn it off. Once you turn it off, you're then going to verbalize that you would untape this from the hand and arm and then you're going to grab a hold of the tegaderm, or excuse me, the tubing just below the tegaderm and pull the tegaderm toward your patient's face. Now I just put this on the back of my glove. You can put it in the trash or on the checks pad, whatever you feel comfortable with. You're going to grab your gauze, you're going to fold it in fours and you're going to hold it above the site and slowly but swiftly pull your catheter out and tell your patient to hold pressure. Now your patient's going to hold pressure for approximately 30 seconds unless they're on anticoagulants then it's 5 to 10 minutes. Now we're going to say that our patient's holding pressure and I'm going to shield this from my patient to ensure that they can't see it and I'm also going to inspect the tip integrity and to ensure that it's intact. Once it's intact I close this up in my hand you move your old gauze out of the way and then you inspect your site for four things. We use the acronym PEBS, P-E-B-S. Stands for pain, exudate, bleeding, and swelling. Once you inspect your site, you're going to take your new clean gauze and you're going to put it on here and verbalize it. You would tape it. Again, once you tape your patient, you're done touching your patient so you can discard all of your bloody nasty materials. 
doff your BSI, perform hand hygiene, and then document.